Hey folks, it's Kikoski here, and welcome back to Let's Play Edna and Harvey, Harvey's New Eyes. And when last we left off, we went within our mind, so that we could get rid of one of the restrictions that has been placed on us by Dr. Marcel. We have a lot of them, but we can now make fire. We're restricted to only having one of these restrictions lifted at any one time, but because we only have one that we can get rid of right now, that's just fine. What we need to do now is we need to get to Garrett. And the way to do that will be to create some fire over here, because it is dark here. Now the only thing that I have that can be set on fire is Edna's map. She'd look at the map later. She hadn't expected that this decision would have unpleasant consequences. Yeah, that's an understatement. There were those voices again, ordering Lily to burn her stuff. Again, Lily resisted the temptation of obeying them. Yeah, we can't burn that. Fair enough. So we're going to have to do something else. Lily could finally put her hand in fires again, as much as she wanted. Which still didn't mean it was a good idea. That is true, it is not a good idea, but we can take this torch! Ooh, didn't notice this before. Mother Superior lit these torches when she sat in her office on dark nights. Let's grab it! Glad we can reach it! Right, clearly we must combine the torch with the map. In the meantime, Lily had collected many little treasures. But no treasure was as important to her as her friendship with Edna. Glad to hear. Now, let's get some fire. And Harvey's not going to stop us, which is good. So, torch. Clearly we need to use this on the table in here. This will go well, right? No? D do you want fire? I don't think you want fire. Lily preferred not to talk to her. The adults seemed to be busy with adult problems. That makes sense. And I doubt this will do anything. You must not lie. Yeah, that's not going to do anything. Fair enough. Thought I'd check. So. Now, let's light this so that we can get illumination. So we can find that secret entrance. Then we need to get out of here. With the help of the torch, Lily could finally inspect the mysterious bracket. What a surprise! It was a torch bracket, but there was still no trace of the promised secret passage. Oh, I think there is. It's just over there. We need to find something to interact with. So, let's examine. There had to be a secret passage there somewhere. We could use this. It was true. A secret passage. Garrett was right once again. Indeed. Let's go. Lily, you did it. Perfect. I think you're finally ready to know the truth. Well, where should I start? Why don't you start with who you are? You. Maybe I should introduce myself first. My full name is Chief Deputy Garrett Gordon Gardengore. I'm an undercover investigator for the juvenile department. I took a position in the convent as a cover to observe Mother Superior. My assignment is to uncover evidence proving her educational methods violate youth protection laws. But Dr. Marcel is an even bigger fish to fry. Compared to him, Mother Superior is a saint. Lily could hardly believe what she was hearing. But now it all made sense. The secret room, the listening devices, and the strained voices she kept hearing at night. It was all coming together to form a coherent overall picture. Also, I noticed the what looks like a video game console there. I wonder if that's one of those ones that lets you play multiple systems without having to switch the actual console. Looks like it. Let's talk about Dr. Marcel. No. Let me finish. As I said, Dr. Marcel is a much bigger fish. The police has been after him for a while. He's suspected of using illegal therapy methods that rob children of their childhood. And the hypnosis he subjected you to confirms this suspicion. Ooh, he's wanted by the police. Interesting. Ah, uh, 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 
Before you ask me any questions, let me quickly tell you one more thing about the hypnosis. This Harvey hypnosis is the doctor's devilish invention. He apparently uses this stuffed rabbit to force his will on you. If we want to get out of here, then you're going to have to fight the behavioral rules he's installed inside you. You can also take on the other behavior blocks, just like you did the one stopping you from playing with fire. But it means you'll have to put yourself back in a trance. The first challenge will be leaving the school grounds. Mother Superior has forbidden you from doing this. And because of the behavior block, you're incapable of being disobedient. The solution is to once again fight the block while you're in a trance. We have to tackle the problem at its source. Fair enough, but why don't we just get the police to arrest them? Call. Call the police? Ha! Lily, I am the police. I can help you and get you to safety. We just have to get off the school ground somehow. I think the best way is to follow in your friend Edna's footsteps. But first, I want to answer any questions you have. So? No questions? Uh-uh. How disappointing. Oh well, okay. Let's go to the tree swing. Off we go. Also, there's pain there. Now, I want to see if I can take the yarn. Uh, can I take this? Actually, the ball of wool should have stayed in the treasure chest for all eternity as a symbol of friendship. But Lily was running out of options. Yeah, we're absolutely running out of options. We need this wool. In the meantime, Lily had collected, but no... That's the same as before. Right, let's close this up. And here we have... Ooh, follow Edna. I mean, I could try doing that, but I get the feeling that is not going to work because the restriction that says we can't. I'll try, though. Hello, Lily. You're not trying to leave the school grounds, are you? You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. And you do know... You must not contradict adults. It's possible to have lots of fun without defying the rules set by adults. We could sort your marbles according to colors. Or come up with a counting rhyme for folding laundry. No matter how tempting the funny rabbit suggestions were, Lily had to get through the fence and find Edna. Yeah, we're gonna have to deal with this. There was that funny rabbit again. On the one hand, Lily was happy about the company. On the other hand, he wouldn't let her leave the school grounds. And Lily didn't see any strings for the hypnosis. She needed a better plan. Ah, well we do have a string. We have yarn. You must not contradict the adults. It wasn't even necessary. There are so many fun things that one is allowed to do. Like counting. Or playing with balls of wool. Hint, hint on the balls of wool, but oh boy, counting! Would you like this? What do you have there? Can I see it? Uh-huh. A ball of wool! Yippee! But that's... that's... We go again. Oh. With the rabbit's help, Lily had returned into a trance. In the distance, she could see the giant Mother Superior stomping around in front of her cave. And over there, where in reality had been a huge gap in the fence, there was now a cobweb with a giant spider in the center. This had to be the second demon for her to defeat. Oh yeah, I can see the scar. There is the Harvey Spider. There are also quite a few other things, like a pile of bones and a tar pit. A giant spider was blocking the path leading down from the mountain. Its eyes were flashing belligerently. Maybe it wanted to be petted. I don't think so, but we are going to have a conversation. Didn't anyone ever tell you that you're not allowed to leave the school grounds? You must not contradict adults. 
But since you're such a good girl, you already know that. Lily did indeed know this, but Garrett had also told her that she was no longer safe here in the convent. Suddenly, adult rules seemed rather nonsensical to Lily. How could she convince the spider demon that even Mother Superior wasn't always right? I don't know, but I do like the connection that that is the cave that we were in before, and here we are now. We have nothing in our inventory? No. Once again, we are out of stuff. But, bones. Between all the gnawed on human bones was a rib that reminded Lily of a unicorn's horn. Lily was delighted. Ah! Are we taking that rib? We are! There's a tar pit. The tar pit was bubbling invitingly. Unfortunately, Lily didn't have time for a bath. Also, it would probably kill us. Can I use the rib with the tar pit? Now I have... Sticky rib! Lily had enough ribs. They were easy to count, but Mother Superior... Okay, can't do anything there. So the only thing is now... I mean, I could give Harvey Spider the rib. Lily was curious whether this would have any effect. When Lily saw how Mother Superior took this spider in her arms, her heart melted. Suddenly, Mother Superior no longer seemed so big and grown up. She emerged from her trance with a blissful smile on her lips. That was very easy. Much simpler than the first one. And now we have a second Harvey. Who's not on fire? That's always an improvement. Now, do we get to keep the ball of yarn? Lily had overcome her second behavioral block. She might still only have been able to ignore one rule, but it was better than nothing. Indeed. We still have the yarn. Okay. So, let's get rid of this one. Magic! Also, how did Marcel and Mother Superior not realize that that was going on? The magic. Who knows? Can we go back to the pond? There wasn't anything else for Lily to do at the convent. She wanted to follow Edna through the fence. Fair enough. All right. Let's go. Chapter 2, Edna's Hideout. Ooh, Chapter 2 already. Good thing I had that map. It was already dusk when Lily set off down the convent hill. You're late. Where have you been all this time? Um... Save it. Save it. <sighs> there's a time for words and a time for action. And there's a third time. The time for sitting at the police station and filling out forms. And that time has come. Uh-oh. What now? Ah, don't say anything. You want your girlfriend. What's her name? Oh, uh, Edna, right? Uh-huh. <sighs> I could tell right away that that girl meant overtime. But if she's still alive, I'll probably have to take care of this too. Although I think it's much more likely that Dr. Marcel has already found her and used a wood chipper to turn her into pig feed. If that's the case, I'll find that out too. So don't worry about your little girlfriend anymore. <sighs> Why do I always have to be so damn compassionate? It's a curse. Oh well. Wait here while I investigate a few things. I'll watch the path to the institution. Maybe I'll learn something that way. If I discover anything, I'll give you a signal. I'll make an owl call. Ooh, ooh, or something like that. You won't miss it. Wait here for me. I'm sure it will only take a few hours. Mm. Um. <sighs> Lily was immensely relieved that Edna's fate was now in the hands of this exceptionally competent youth investigator. However, she would have liked to have shown him the map with the directions to Edna's hiding place. But Garrett had already disappeared. Lily risked a glance at the map. 
she could see more lake from here. Edna's hiding place couldn't be that far. You're not planning on running into the moor after dark, are you? Don't you know how dangerous that is? You must not hang around dangerous places. There are so many other nice places for children to visit. The Agricultural Museum, for example. Or the Job Information Center at the Employment Office. Lily was starting to think that the funny stuffed rabbit wasn't so funny after all. She stubbornly risked another look at the map. You must not hang around dangerous places. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I certainly didn't want to startle you. We're friends, after all. And friends don't play pranks on each other. Hmm. I don't think Harvey is my friend, and I bet I can't pick this up. Do I still have the... I still have the yarn! Excellent. The map had developed an unusual independence. Lily thought it was behaving very badly. Well, come back here, map! Mm. Mm. Right, so, we have... More lake, the bridge, and the village. Bet we can't go this way. But we can! And there is the hideout, just right here. Right next to... that. Bet we can't just go in here. And I bet Edna's already gone by the time we can get in here. You must not hang around dangerous places. Okay, he's not going to just hang around anymore for me to use the yarn. That is a problem. We could go to the bridge, but I doubt the bridge is going to really give us any forward motion. The path that Garrett had taken led Lily to a small bridge over one of the brackish creeks running off from Moor Lake. Two trustworthy looking men in white lab coats were working there. Lily wasn't quite sure what to make of them. She also recognized Garrett in the bushes on the other shoreline. Apparently, he didn't want to be seen by the two men. And although the two nocturnal workers had made a friendly impression on Lily, she decided to follow the youth investigator's lead. And, have you found anything yet? Do you have to keep asking that? I'll let you know if I discover something. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think Dr. Marcel's madness is starting to rub off on me. Ever since we found this stuffed rabbit by the lake, he's been obsessed. We should be taking care of patients instead of poking around the moor. And then there's that absurd plan with the hypnosis doll. Stop already, and keep looking. Have you actually found anything yet? Well... Lily had heard enough. Apparently, the men in white were Dr. Marcel's minions. It appeared that Edna's concern had been justified. Dr. Marcel really was looking for her. It was now more important than ever to find Edna's hiding place. Oh, things are not looking good here. Also, I recognize you. Don't recognize the other one, though. Ooh, feeding trough. Can't look at that. I was hoping to be able to look at that. There was a sign on the feeding trough. Don't feed the saber-toothed boars. Saber-toothed boars are very dangerous. In the event of an encounter, make sure you don't look like a well-behaved convent schoolgirl. Saber-toothed boars are nocturnal, grow up to six feet long, and like to lurk in the shadows. They can be frequently found near the territorial herb Artemisia since they mark their territory on the leaves of this plant. Therefore, avoid areas where this herb grows after dark. The Forest Ranger. Lily would have gladly heeded the warning, but she had no idea how to recognize Artemisia. I'm sure we'll never come across it at all. Can I use the wool on this? Lily doubted that saber-toothed boars like something like that, but she wasn't supposed to feed them anyway. That is true. We aren't. Also, is the wool gonna turn into the next paper cup? I don't think I can place it everywhere like I could the paper cup, but maybe we can. It appeared that Edna's concern had been justified. Dr. Marcel, it was now... Okay, that's the same. Let's see if we can get more dialogue from them. Lily didn't want the attendants to notice her. True that. Garrett did what he was best at, listening. And also, not helping us, really. 
Okay, he helped us a little bit. But he's not helping us now. Did you hear something? I, I don't know. Hopefully not another saber-toothed boar. I'm still out of breath. So we can't do anything here because they're there. So really the only place we can go is where the map went. And so when we come back, folks, uh, that's always in view. I don't like that. But maybe we can get some help in the village. I mean, it's only the dead of night. I'm sure things will be fine. Also, it's convenient that this signpost has all four locations we could possibly want to visit on it. The village, the convent which we escaped from, Edna's hideout, and... I don't want to visit there. But I get the feeling we're going to have to visit there eventually. And so, when we come back, folks, chasing after that map and finding some way to beguile Harvey. For well, Harvey is... someone we don't want to see these days. Although that definitely is the Harvey that Edna had. Found by the lake. Did she drop him? I imagine that's the only reason they'd be separated, but she doesn't seem to miss him. Hmm. The plot thickens. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. Later.